We've seen several functions for working with lists so far in Coq. Let's try to build another function and learn something interesting from it. Suppose I wanted to retrieve the nth element of a list. I would run into trouble if the list were too short. That is, if I asked for a list element that was too far into the list, right? maybe the list only has three elements in it and I asked for the 10th element. There's no possible good result to return there. This is a similar situation that we had when we defined the head function earlier for lists, right? If there's nothing in the list, how can you get the head? Okay, so this is the same phenomenon occurring once more. Let's see what we can do about it. Well, here's a bad way to implement the nth function. Suppose I were trying to take element n of a list LST. Well, if the list was empty, I would have no good choice of what to return. Uh, I guess I could return 42. Uh, another possibility would be to ask for a default value to be passed in here, which is what we did earlier for head. Uh, but let's see a different solution here in just a second. Uh, before that, to finish coding the function, if the list does have a head element in it, and if I'm asking for element number zero in the list, then I can return that head element. Otherwise, I recurse. Right, I have the successor of some natural number k, and so I'm going to take the nth uh, element of the tail of the list, where n is k. That will work. It just won't work great on empty lists because it's doing something completely arbitrary. There's a better solution. In fact, this is a better solution, arguably, than even the one we used for head before. And that is to introduce a new data type that represents, well, the outcome of a partial function. What do I mean by that? You can think of nth as being a partial function, in the sense from mathematics, of a function that's not really defined on some inputs. Right? There really is no good output that's possible when you ask for an element that's too far into the list, that's longer than the length of the list. In that sense, you can think of nth as being a partial function. Now, Koch is forcing us to make all of our functions total here. Uh, we don't have the ability to say, raise an exception like we would in other languages and thereby make the function partial that way. We'll see in a later chapter why it would be bad for functions to be partial, by the way. So what can we do to make it total? Well, we can introduce our own data type to represent partial functions, the outcome of partial functions. And we'll, for here, we'll call that option, or rather nat option. So this will be the outcome of a function that is partial on natural numbers. Either the function has nothing it can return because it's partial in, the, in that case, or there's something it can return, in which case it will return a natural number n. Okay. So we've got a sum constructor and a none constructor. The sum constructor carries just a single natural number. The none constructor carries nothing. And nat option is a type. So using that, we can change the output type of nth to return a nat option to indicate, yes, there was a meaningful output that could be produced, or no, there was no meaningful output that could be produced. We've, we've hit the partiality of the function in that case. OK, so we match the list. If the list is empty, then we return none. There is no nat that we can return that's meaningful here. This is much better than returning some arbitrary value like 42. And arguably, it's better than asking the programmer uh, who's using this function to pass in some default value. OK, the rest of this proceeds as it did before, except for that in the case where we did find the element we need to return, we have to put the sum constructor in front of it. A common error when one is first used to getting used to working with options is to forget to put that sum constructor in. And if that happens, then we get an error, type checking error here. Term h has type nat, well, it's expected to have type nat option. Okay, so we'll put that in. Why is it called nth error? Uh, actually, that's what the standard library in Coq calls the equivalent function. Uh, you can think of it as it's, it's the none here is sort of indicating the error case. Uh, some other libraries. OCaml, for example, would actually call this nth opt because it's returning an option. OK, doesn't really matter which. Here's some examples of it. If we take nth error 0 of this list, then we're going to get the first element of that list out. But remember, it's got the sum constructor wrapped around it. Right, this is a nat option. It is not a nat. So that unit test should go through. If we ask for the element at position 3, then we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, so that gets us sum 7. And if we ask for something that's way past the end of the list, 9 here, we're going to get that error case. We're going to get none because nth is, is partial in that sense. So 
Nat option is a nice way of solving the problem that we had of nth being partial, and you could use the same thing for head. We could clean up the code here a little bit by using another feature, which is to simultaneously pattern match against both the list and the nat at the same time. So I do that by writing a comma in between them like this. So I'm matching both the list and the natural number. And then I write a pattern for both of them separated by a comma. So if the list is empty, I don't really care what the natural number is. I'm going to return none because I can't even get any elements out of the empty list. On the other hand, if the list has a head element and I'm asking for the element at position zero, then I'm going to return that head element, of course, wrapped with the sum constructor. And if the list has a tail, and I'm looking for the successor of a natural number k at that position, then I will recurse with t and k. So that is nice in the sense that it gets rid of that nestern pattern match that I had to write up here, and it also shortens the code considerably. And the unit test that we had before would still go through with nat option there. Programming with options is a very nice thing once you get used to it. However, if you're coming from a language, say Java or many other OO languages, or even uh, other languages that were invented before OO that had a null value in them, then options feel a little bit weird at first because you might just be thinking, oh, well, I should return null in such a case. Options are a more principled way of doing the same thing. You can think of none, the none constructor here in, in that option, as a kind of principled way of saying, this is the meaningless response that I could give. Just like in some of those other languages, you would return null if there were no object that made sense to return. And here you would return sum if there is some sensible thing to return. The advantage of working with options is that they force you to pattern match against the result. If you ever go to use the result of n there, you are forced to pattern match against it and decide or discover whether the value that was returned by nth option was in fact an error indicated by none or was something meaningful returned by sum. That helps you write code that handles those error cases better because you'll never forget them. Indeed, if you've ever programmed in an OO language, you've probably had the experience of forgetting to check for null and getting a null pointer exception. So this is a better way to handle that same kind of aspect of programming when there are errors that are possible or functions that are partial.